And if you're not familiar with this game, this is a trick-taking tableau builder, and it does also come in two different versions. There is the People Edition, which features the full rule set, and then there is the Hedgehog Edition, which is a slightly simplified and streamlined version of that same game. And I do know exactly what you're wondering now, and the answer is yes, you can get a plushie with a zipper on it that you can use to store both of these original games as well as this new expansion. But before I get into what exactly the expansion adds to the game, I'll give you a little bit of an idea of how the original game plays, specifically the People edition of the game because the publisher was kind enough to send me a copy, so let's go ahead and crack that open. And like I said, this is a trick-taking game, so all you really need to play it is this deck of cards here, but there are a few goodies in the box as well. You're going to be starting the game by dealing a hand of cards to each player depending on player count, and then players are going to be using those cards to play into various tricks until all the players have played all of their cards, and then that's going to be triggering the end of a round. There's three rounds in a game, and then at the end of the third round, players are going to be tallying up all their victory points, and the player with the most at that time wins the game. I just quickly set this up as a three-player game where each player is going to be starting with 10 cards, and then there's going to be a bunch of cards left over, and those are just omitted for this round. The game also provides player aids for each of the players, as well as a first player card in order to keep track of who is currently leading the trick. And if we take a look at my hand of cards here, you'll see that we have a bunch of cards of different suits, which is both represented by the color of the card, as well as the iconography on it. Each of the cards will also either have a value on it, which represents the amount of victory points it's worth at the end of the game, if you can get it into your tableau or it'll have some sort of multiplier, which is actually going to change the value of this card depending on how many cards you have in your tableau already that match that suit. Or in the case of this arrow card, it's actually going to be multiplying by the number of matching suits in your neighbor's tableaus. The nice thing about these multiplier cards is that they can be worth very little at the beginning of the game, since right now I have no cards in my tableau and my neighbors have no cards in their tableau, making the value of these cards essentially zero. But then as players add cards of matching suits into their tableaus throughout the game, it can actually make these cards worth quite a bit. This is a really nice thing to take advantage of because it's actually the lowest card in a trick that's going to be winning that trick. So even though you really want to get the 7 into your tableau, winning the trick with it is actually very difficult since it's actually the highest card offered in the game. But the way that tricks work in this game is that as the lead player, I can just go ahead and play any card from my hand to start off the trick. And in this case, I'm playing a yellow multiplier card, which is actually worth zero at this point in the game since I don't have any of these yellow suits in my tableau currently. Each other player at the table is then going to be playing a card from their hand and turn order into the same trick. And one thing to note about how the tricks work in this game is that you can only win the trick if you match the lead player's suit or color, but you are not required to follow that same suit. You can just play any card from your hand, so if you just want to get rid of a card and save that suit for later, that is something that you are allowed to do. So I'll just go ahead and randomly play whatever cards are at the top of these other players' decks. And this is actually a great example that shows a few different mechanisms in the game because this player did not follow the suit which means that they can't win the trick so we can just discard their card for now and then this player actually played a zero that is every suit which means that they did follow suit since this is a wild but in this case they are matching my value since this is also currently a zero whenever there is a tie it's the player that went last that's going to be winning the trick this means that they have won this trick so they're going to be adding this card into their tableau and then the other players' cards get discarded. Because they won the trick, they are now going to become the first player, and then they're going to go ahead and play their next card. I don't want them to win with a 5 and get 5 victory points for the end of the game, so I'm going to go ahead and play under that. And then the next player is going to be playing their card, and they also happen to play a 0, which also is any suit, so they're going to be winning this trick and adding that into their tableau. These other two get discarded, and then they become the first player. So they're going to go ahead and play their card, which is a pink 3. This player plays their card, which has the two arrows on it, which means that it's equal to the number of pink cards in their neighbor's tableau. I don't have any cards in my tableau yet, but they do have this wild, so this one is currently worth a 1. Lucky for me, I have this 1x, which is worth the number of pink cards in my tableau, which is currently 0. So this is currently worth a 0, which means that I would win the trick. These two cards then get discarded and then I would keep mine adding it to my tableau. The cool thing about adding this card into my tableau is that even though it was just worth zero a second ago because I had no pink cards in my tableau, 
This card also just happens to be a pink card, so when it does get added, it does count itself, and the value of this is now going to be worth one point at the end of the game. If I'm able to get even more pink cards in my tableau by that time, those are also going to be increasing the value of this card. But there is one other thing that happens whenever you win a trick that I haven't explained yet, and that comes down to these icons on the sides of your cards, and these represent how many cards that you have to discard whenever you win a trick. This means that because I won this trick with this card, I now have to discard one card from my hand here. I think I'll just go ahead and throw away this gray card, but if we rewind back to the other player's turns, this player would have had to discard one for playing that card, and this player would have had to discard one for winning that card. And something really cool about this mechanism that you might have already noticed is that if you are winning a lot of tricks in a round and those cards that you're winning are causing you to discard a lot of your cards, you could actually be out of the round a lot earlier than your opponents. Running out of cards does not end the round, it only ends the round for you. So if I were to have played all of my cards, I now just have to sit back until these players have run out of their cards. The funny thing about that is that if this player ran out of their cards before this player did, they still get to go ahead and play their cards into tricks as if there were other players. The only difference here is that they are always guaranteed to win whatever they play. This means that if you have a really high card like a 7, you might want to intentionally lose some of your tricks so that you are the last player standing. You can go ahead and play that card uncontested, ensuring that you will get it into your tableau. This new expansion is going to be adding five new modules that you can just go ahead and mix into the game. So let's go ahead and check out what's in the box here. And we got a few more fun little stickers here, a nice little hedgehog component, as well as a bunch of new cards. This hedgehog token is going to be acting as an upgrade for the first player card. So instead of using this card, you can use this nice little token. But it does also come with another rule that you can choose to play in the game. And that's that whoever is the first player can choose whether to face this token to the right or to the left. And whichever way that you face it is going to determine in which order players have to play their cards. So this adds another layer of strategy with you being able to decide which player beside you is going to be the player that gets to play their cards last with different pros and cons to being last or earlier in the turn order. There is also a card version of this token in the expansion as well if you would rather continue playing with the card. But the next module offered in this expansion is the Disaster Warning module. And this is going to be including a card for each of the different suits. The way that these work is that you're just going to be adding them to the deck with the other cards, shuffling them in and dealing them out with the other cards as normal. The difference with these is that if you get one of these cards and you're able to win a trick with it, it actually forces all the players at the table to discard the rest of the cards in their hand if they have won a trick during the current round. This module alone actually adds quite a few new strategies into the game since winning a trick with these cards can be quite beneficial since they are worth the highest value in the game now, but also to win a trick with these cards is quite difficult so you're going to have to time it appropriately and then you also don't really want to win with it if someone else at the table hasn't won a trick yet since any of those players will still remain in the round being able to play whatever cards they want, but also all the players won't be so quick to play their zero wild cards because they'll want to hang on to those to try and fend off any of these cards if they do make an appearance. Then there is also the case where someone else plays one of these cards and maybe the cards in your hand just really aren't all that valuable to you. You might actually choose to play an off suit card in order to allow that player to win that trick forcing everyone at the table to discard their cards because that might be more of a strategic advantage to you. The next two modules are very similar to each other, so I'll just go ahead and explain them together here. But this is the lightning module and the fireworks module. And these cards are really nice because if you play them, it guarantees that you go first on the following round. But each of these cards is going to affect the current round a little bit differently. Whenever a player plays the lightning card, the trick is just resolved as normal with the player who played the lowest card winning the trick. But then rather than adding that card into their tableau, they're going to be forced to discard that card just like every other card in that trick. This is a great card to play if a player is going to be winning a trick with a really nice card that you don't want them to have, but that player is compensated by drawing a card randomly from the deck that they'll then be able to add to their hand. 
The fireworks card is actually a really interesting one because if you play this card, you actually lose that round and everyone else wins. That might sound like a bad thing for you, but this can actually be used to your advantage if the other players are playing cards that they're just trying to get rid of. Forcing them to win not only gets them a card into their tableau that may not add much value to them, but it also forces them to discard the number of cards outlined on that card, which will allow you to dwindle down the cards that they have in their hand. But also, if you do have a card like this in your tableau already that's going to be scaling its points based on what's in your neighbor's tableau, you might want to force them to add those cards that you need into their tableaus by using this card. And the last module added in this expansion adds trump into the game. And the way that this works is that you're going to be putting this card into the center of the table. And then instead of using this token to mark the first player, you're instead going to be using it to point at which suit is currently trump. This is another reason why they do provide a card version of this token. The way that this module gets incorporated into the game is that there's going to be no trump suit set for the first trick of the game, but then every time a trick is won, whatever suit won that trick is going to be trump for the next round. In this case, the player led with the blue snowflake, which means that the snowflake is going to be trump for the next round. The catch here is that whichever suit is trump can now beat the lead suit, and if you are leading a trick, you are not allowed to lead with the suit that currently is trump. This means that I could go ahead and play this card, but then the next player could actually try to win this trick with a six because the trump always beats the lead suit. Of course, if multiple trump suits are played, it's gonna be the lowest one that does win the trick. So since this player does have a one, they're gonna go ahead and play that because it does prevent the other player from getting that six. Since the suit of trump is always decided by the suit that won the previous trick, the blue snowflake would remain as trump for the following round since the snowflake was used to win that trick. But that's everything you need to know to play Park Life, and I think this new expansion adds a lot more strategy into the game, so if that is something that you are looking for, definitely check this one out, and I will have it linked in the description down below.